Oh, hi.
First off, I'm going to hand around the um, attendance for tonight. So if you guys would just put your name and your Eagles email, that'd be great. Um, my name is Alexander Catano. I am the, the co-director of the business plan competition. Concordia hosts a competition annually here. Con excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Anyway, um, Concordia hosts a business plan competition here annually. And what we do during that competition is we invite students from all majors to come and participate. They put together their own business plan in a team or individual, up to four people. And then with that business plan, they actually go on to present that business plan on our competition theme. So what we've done to sort of kick off this year and sort of bring people uh, involved and sort of get them to understand what we do is we've asked Lee Lamb, the CEO of Wahoo's Fish Tacos, to come by. But before I do that, I'm gonna introduce my co-director. I'm Jerry Durant. Hello everybody, my name is Todd Veron, you guys, most of you probably know me as Jerry. I'm um, co-director with Alexander this year, I'm very fortunate to be in this position. Um, as Alexander mentioned, this is our fifth annual business plan competition uh, held here at Concordia. Um, I think if we want to introduce our guest. And our guest speaker for tonight is actually Wayne Lamb, as CEO and founder of Wahoo Spirits Tacos. So we're going to get Thank you. 
things in life, right? It's, you know, it is true. So we do have a special guest here, the young man here. I went to school with his dad. I was in the same fraternity. So he can probably tell you great stories about all these road trips and all the, it happened. So my brothers actually came down to visit me, right? But I would, ended up going to San Diego State. And two things, right? Probably the worst decision for a university because I went to San Diego State to be an uh, aerospace engineer. And I don't know if you guys know what San Diego is otherwise known as. <laughs> Big Vegas party school in the Western <laughs> United States. And the engineering school happened to be past the business school. It was very, like at the other end of the campus. And it was very distracting because guys like his dad would always say, wait, what are you doing? You know, there's a happy hour, there's something going on here and there's this thing called fraternities and all this stuff, right? So it made it very <laughs> difficult for me to go to the engineering school, right? And I will tell you, like, it, it, you know, you, at, at some point in your life, you know, I'm not as smart as you think I look, right? <laughs> because it, I should have gone to another school if I was truly gonna stick out the engineering, right? So instead, I got kicked out of the engineering school, very nicely asked to say, hey, you don't have the GPA to stay here, so maybe you should go do something easier, which is the business school, right? So at the time, most Asian kids, you know, we were on engineering, pre-med or something like that. So here I am in, a, you know, in a fraternity and also at, you know, the business school. But the good thing about being in a fraternity in the business school, I figured out that I would have a little more time, unlike the engineering student that spent a lot of time studying, right, math and physics and calculus, where I could go maybe do some more surfing. And that's where we found the first office. So whenever my kid brothers 
in high school we all went together now they would come and you know pick me up and we go down to mexico together and we have some fun and everybody talked about hey how come somebody doesn't do this back at home why do they have to go all the way to mexico so when you start thinking about your business right thinking about why why is somebody you know not doing this right and today i, I like to think about it, not just the ideas of all the things that you guys start thinking right there's no such thing let me just be blunt easy money the apps all these crazy things you know these innovations these gadgets whatever think about the one that made it right and think about all the millions that didn't right it's not that they were bad ideas it's just maybe there was something already in existence that you weren't aware of or maybe it did cost too much money to get to market and most important people steal people's ideas and you know like google I mean, you look at Facebook, I mean, look at a lot of things. It wasn't the original, and somebody else might have had it, somebody else perfected it, and somebody else got to market first, right? And I can tell you without hesitation, my older son, who did start an amazing app, by the time they got it to market, by the time they got it sold, somebody else took the idea from them. So they ended up with Donut, right? After maybe five or six years of working at it, spent probably about three to five million dollars getting everything together, and then basically, overnight lost it all right so it happens to more you know 99 percent of the people just like the restaurant business 90 plus percent failure rate so in all the businesses you only hear about the easy success stories you don't hear about the ones that fail right so this is where the true thing about when you guys are starting with the business competition the first thing that you know in life assumptions right they always say don't make assumptions because you know they'll make you an ass out of you and whatever right because it is true right because you start putting all these you know, ideas up and you say, okay, we're gonna assume that we're gonna sell 300 tacos a day. We're gonna assume we're gonna sell it for this and we're gonna do this. Well, before you can do any of that, how are you gonna get people to come in and actually buy it from you, right? So think about that first. It goes, how am I gonna get the word out before I can make one transaction? So all your forecasting, all your crazy ideas are wonderful. But think about how you can get somebody to actually come in and actually make a purchase from you or sign up for your app, sign up for your service. How are you gonna get the very first person? And the easiest way is go around to your friends, right? So ask them, was, would you pay X, right? Because there's the old thing where you go to a great restaurant and you have a great meal. Then you get your bill like, ooh, right? And what is that ooh for? It's probably usually the price, right? Well, that fish taco was great for 50 cents. It was amazing at 50 cents. At five dollars, not so sure it was that good, right? At ten dollars, ooh, that wasn't that good at all. But at fifty cents, it was amazing, right? So think about the value proposition or whatever service, gadget, whatever it is that you're going to create, because in the end, you know, I can tell you without a hesitation, nobody in my group ever comes back from their meeting with their attorney and says, "Dude, that was the best service that I ever got." <laughs> Because all you can think about is, oh my God, I just paid him $500 an hour. I just paid him whatever an hour. So no matter how good of a service you got from your attorney, nobody comes back with, ah, that was awesome. You go to your CPA, oh my God, that was amazing. He did the best job on my taxes. Oh, but how much did I have to pay for it? So think about all these great careers, attorneys, CPAs, no matter what they do. And I'm pretty sure no matter where you go to get your car fixed, do you ever feel good about how much you pay for it, <laughs> right? And the guy is doing an honest job, I think, right? But you come out and say, oh my God, I just got ripped off, <laughs> right? And when your partner comes by to you know, do all the lawn mowing or whatever, goes, oh my God, how much did we pay that guy? And when the lady comes in to clean your house, whatever, so think about all these things because you're like, wow, that would have been great at 50 cents, but at $10, man, that guy just got ripped off. So think about what it is that you're gonna create, sell, you know, whatever it is, right? Because it's that equation that that supply and demand, price elasticity, all those stupid things you're gonna learn, there is a reason why they cross, right? Because at a certain place, no matter what it is that you're doing, it feels good, ooh, that didn't feel so good, and man, I hate that, right? Because I got ripped off. So where are you gonna be in that spectrum of life, right? So for us, we're on the lower end. But believe it or not, even on our end, at 
three or four dollars a taco or whatever. The expectation level today, because it's different, right? Today you've got something else to deal with. The stupid thing called the internet, right? Because you guys don't have to come to my restaurant and physically confront me to say, I thought that meal was too expensive. I didn't get enough beef in my burrito. I didn't get enough chips in my basket. You can send me an email that says, I can't believe that your staff shortchanged me on your chips. And I'm like, come and see me. I, that's what I want to say to these people. Because I know, one, they're full of it. <laughs> because everything today in every restaurant is pre-measured, right? Everything that you go, believe it or not, the price of oil, the price of labor, everything is set. So when you think you got ripped off, go and see the charts. It'll be $10 for an oil change, it'll be $15 for this, right? Everything is set. But you still feel ripped off, but you are not going to go to the mechanic and say, oh my God, I feel ripped off. But you have no issue going online and like, oh my God, that guy is a two star and he totally jacked me. I'm like, really? But you don't have the balls. Nobody does this <laughs> generation to actually go there and say, hey, why did you charge me this, right? But don't eat my entire burrito and send me an email that goes, oh my God, there was nothing in my burrito. Like, I, there's nothing left. Because <laughs> I already called my manager to say, hey, what happened here? And they said, the guy ate the entire burrito. He just wants a free burrito. <laughs> so I have a standard email that I send out. Without saying you're a complete jack, I say, hey, next time we'll do better, make sure they get the right cream, all right? I'm like, come on. <laughs> Send me, right? So that's what today's work environment is, right? Because you can hide, right? And you can complain, and you can point fingers, you can do all this, because you can hide behind the internet, right? So think about how that affects your business. Because I have so many amazing friends that do amazing things, and we all talk about Yelp. And I'm like, oh my God, if I can get another one of those, right? And there's nothing, like literally my friends at work, you know, my friends running in now burger, right? And they hate the one that goes, what do you hate the most, right? And I said, the guy that comes in with this, one bite left of their hamburger. And I said, I ordered without cheese. There's <laughs> cheese in it. You ate the entire hamburger. And now you want another one. Yes, there's cheese in it. <laughs> think about what it does to your business. So I'll give you guys to think about this, right? In the world of consumer products, or whatever it is, the gold standard is, oh my God, I got it into Costco. I got it into Walmart, right? I got it into Sam's Club. I'm gonna, I got it into Amazon. I'm gonna sell a boatload of these. True. You know how much money you're gonna make? Right? Zero. Why? Because Costco and all of these companies in their contract that says you are fully responsible, not Costco, if the consumer doesn't like your product and we don't care why they don't like it. Let me give you some fun stories, okay? This is your television based right here in Irvine. Willie Wang, Paul Wang, the founders, good friends of mine. You know what their margins are on TV? About 1%. 1%. Why is 1%, right? Because all these crazy Costco customers, two kinds. The kinds that buy because they actually want to enjoy the TV. And the ones that buy because they can't afford it, but they invited the whole neighborhood to watch the Super Bowl. The day after the Super Bowl, I can't afford this 80-inch TV. I'm just going to take it back to Costco because I didn't like it. Costco just takes it back and ships it right back to Vizio. Do you know how many TVs I have in my restaurant that are from Vizio? <laughs> because I get all the leftovers. <laughs> in about every four months, I get a phone call that goes, wait, come on, get some TVs. Because the employees already bought all the ones they want, <laughs> right? But there's thousands of TVs being returned every year by people that had no intention of ever buying a TV, right? Here's another stat for you, right? Tony Shea, CEO of Zappos, another buddy of mine, right? Why is his margin 1%? Because for every four pairs of shoes he sells, three of them get returned. What are you gonna do with three pairs of shoes that got returned? You gotta give them away. You sell them at Marshalls, Ross, because they can't sell them as new shoes anymore. 
That's why you can find amazing shoes if you know what you're looking for at those discount retailers at a fraction of the cost. But guess who eats the cost on those shoes? It's not Zappos, it's the manufacturer of the shoe. So Zappos is that an Amazon model, right? So if you're a manufacturer, right, be ready. <laughs> and the one, and, but these guys, they know the margins and they know how to play it, right? They tighten the restrictions on the return. So it used to be you had a year to return the TV. I believe now it's like 30 days, right? Because they want to make sure that you don't watch the entire playoffs and the Super Bowl and then you bring the TV back. <laughs> so they shorten the window a little bit, okay? So think about that. So you got to know the policies on what the items are. But literally, for me, right, I bought the Costco and I bought, I call it relatively small place, right? Like a dish rack, right? But because I live at the beach, the salt water corrodes everything. Six months, everything is like rusted. So I've taken it back because I'm like, my wife's like, the thing is rusted. I'm like, well, you're right. The manufacturer, you know, should last more than six months, right? So I don't feel guilty because I actually used it and it, it's stainless steel and it's corroded. They're like, boom, here's a brand new one, right? And I'm thinking, oh shit, the manufacturer, what the hell is he gonna do with that? Because he already used the money that he got paid for this six months ago. Now what is he going to do with it? It's trash, right? So whatever the cost was, I feel bad because, hey, you shouldn't have made that item. You should have maybe plastic covered the whole thing. So even if it was rusty, you wouldn't be able to see it, right? But the one friend of mine that absolutely got decimated, he decided, he goes, I got the gold mine. I'm making surfboards for Costco. Did anybody here surf? We got a couple. Okay, what happens to surfboards, shortboards specifically, when you go over the falls a few times? They break in half, right? Store in Hawaii, Costco. Every day, guys go out surfing, break their board, come back and say, I need a new surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> they were in charge of replacing every single board that broke for three years after they already shut their factory down. It bankrupted them. Because the guy goes, you can't go to Hawaii and sell the boards. He goes, you got into Costco. We're going to ship all the boards to Hawaii. Boom. Bankrupted the guys. The local guys, right? So you got to remember, the margins are very small, you know? So think about your services and think about it, right? Because our economy, and these are like people that actually bought it for use, and some are buying it for abuse. So this is where I stand, on, just to tell you the funny story. I went to the X Games this summer in Minnesota. We're the official food partner for the X Games and all this stuff. We do all the app, it's amazing, you know, atmosphere. We're literally hanging out with all the guys. And I told my friend that was in Minnesota, he goes, hey, don't forget, I need a high speed blender to make my salsas. And he goes, I got it, right? So I land and he goes, oh my God, I totally forgot to get it. And I'm talking like a Vitamix model, not the little homemade one, right? And he goes, all right, fine, I gotta go to Costco get some stuff, I'm gonna get one in there anyway. So I buy it, it's 450 bucks, and my wife goes, why don't you return it on your way out? I'm like, no, I can't do that. Because one, I bought it for a purpose. Second, I don't want to take it back, right? But one of my buddies that was there, and I'm like, hey, you live here, right? I'm going to rent a car to drive. He goes, I can drive you around for the whole week because I'll take the week off because I want to hang out, right? Because I have all the access. I said, I would have paid 400 bucks for the car rental. Why don't I just give you the Vitamix at the end? And he goes, done, great deal. Because I need a Vitamix, I'm a bachelor, I, I've always wanted to buy one, I do want to buy 450 bucks, and driving you around, I'm gonna go to the X Games with you every day anyway, so I have no issue. I don't feel guilty. Now, if he takes it back, not my problem, <laughs> right? But I didn't want to take it back. So think about it, right? If you go to do something in business, think about it, because we should be responsible, and that's why the cost of doing business in this country has just gone crazy, right? So you got great products, but then if it's easy for people to return, it, it, you're not ever gonna make money because nobody's responsible for making the wrong purchase, right? So start thinking about that, right? And then the other thing that in life you guys should do is, you guys all know, everybody plays video games here? A few of you guys do? Have you guys ever seen one of these? Yep. You know what this is? There's only a handful of these in the world ever made. This is a demo phone, right? Why me? This is called a real influencer, not these make-believe things. You see. <laughs> <laughs> so my job is to use the phone, not to play video games, but to actually like make phone calls. And every now and then, I take pictures. It just has an amazing camera, and then tag, you know, raise your phone. Right? 
There's only a handful of these ever made in the world. So as far as I know, I don't know if it's ever made it into production. And there's my nephew. Hey, Sam. Hi. Come over here. <laughs> so anyway, this is Samuel, my older brother's oldest son. First son. So today we talk about synergy, right? What is synergy? It's creating great partnerships, right? So in life, right, whether you guys surround, the key thing about I'm going to make sure that you guys don't become the one guy in your group, in your case study group, in this competition, that doesn't bring anything to the table, okay? And this is real life, right? I remember when I was in college, right, and the reason I teach here part-time in the MBA school is I teach the one class, I hated it, but it's the only class in the business school I ever got an A in, right? It's the case study class, which is what you guys are doing, right? It's basically creating and solving, like creating a company or solving a problem. So inevitably, when you're seniors and you're over <coughs> a certain age, 21 legal, you tend to go out on Friday nights. So you tend to basically try to get together on Saturday mornings because that's the only free morning you have to kind of solve your case study. So everybody shows up, hey, it's nine o'clock at the library, we're gonna do this and we're gonna solve our case. Out of five guys, there was always one person that would show up slightly under the weather because they went out too big on Friday night. So guess what? They, the other four of us would have to carry the weight of the one person that wasn't contributing because he was like, mm -hmm, whatever, right? And we're like, come on, right? So in life, though, that was just a little to get a grade. But in life, when you're working with five people and one person is not carrying their weight, the rest of you guys have to carry that, right? And you guys have seen plenty of movies. Was it uh, Harold and Kumar, right? It, the Asian kid is doing all the work, right? While the guy's out partying all weekend, right? And that's life, right? If you allow it to happen. So what don't you want to be? You want, you don't want to be that one guy who doesn't bring things to the group, right? The other thing is don't allow it to happen because you're enabling somebody else to basically slide through, get paid the same amount you're getting paid for doing almost no work because you're doing all the work. So synergy is only created when the five of you guys actually contribute. So don't be the slacker of the group, right? And don't let anybody slack in your group. Get rid of them. Because that's what life is all about. So as you grow, you want to be the man, right? And I joke about it because it's true. When you can be the best of everything, right, then people always want you around and you get involved, right? So when I joke about the exchange, every other brand that was there, they're paying to be there. I'm getting paid to show up. Why would somebody bring a taco guy from California to take care of all the athletes? Because the athletes, most of them happen to be from California. And they said, if there was a choice of restaurant, who would you like to be here to take care of us? I'm the first guy, right? So I do the US Open of Surfing, I do the Winter <coughs> Exchange, the Summer Exchange, the Do Tour, I do all these events, right? Because people believe in what we do, that we put out a great product, and we're gonna enhance the experience. Because if I'm gonna be competing at my best level, I want the food that's gonna take care of me to be at the best, right? And it's not that we're cheaper or not expensive, it's just that we're good at what we do, right? So we contribute to the experience, and that's what you guys should think about, right? So I think about right now, what is probably the number one, I, I get probably stupid, I don't know how anybody takes 50 bucks with these heavy bottles, but they do. But to have it co-branded with Roberts, right? And that's something like, most people are like, what? I'm like, yeah, not only do I have a Yeti, but I had it co-branded. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't spend 50 bucks on these stupid things, right? I just laugh, right? Right now, probably the number one shoe brand in the state, whatever, is a super little thing, right? So this is our little 30th anniversary shoe, right? I mean, it's, it's got our logo on the inside. I mean, it's got everything, right? But I laugh about it because this is the third one we've made. This is the third design. We did one for our 10, we did one for the 25th anniversary, this is our 30th, right? Most brands are dying. They'll send emails, whatever they want. Disney, all these guys, we're in a different category, right? Because nobody can go to these guys and say, hey, not only do I want to have this design, I want to pay for this. Imagine that, right? I want to do this thing with Yeti, but I don't want to pay for it. You can do anything you want if you pay for it, right? You guys can go to any concert you want and pay for it. But there's a difference between a partnership because they see the value of doing something with us. 
because we are at the X Games. So when I brought the Yeti person to the X Games with me, they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. We should do this with you, right? So Beyond Meat, Impossible, all these guys, love them to death. I just can't stand their product. But we could get as much Beyond and Impossible proteins to our restaurants just so that they could get the halo effect that we're making tacos out of their protein meat. But their protein meat is literally 500 times the percent the number of sodium that you should be intaking. So I'm like, I can't do it. You know, I don't care if it's free or not, I don't wanna do it. So we have re these great synergies with amazing blends that you can think of. And I joke because every now and again, you know, my, my nephews come by and I'm like, here, take this, take this, because I have like extras of everything. So his younger brother who happens to be about my size, to say, I'll take one of those, because <laughs> we have it. Why not, right? So that's the other thing too, share, right? Because that's how everything gets done in life, right? So coming up with ideas, dime a dozen. It's how do we get the idea from here to here? Look at all the obstacles, right? But surround yourself with people that know things that you're not good at. If you're better finance, find somebody who's better at marketing, find somebody who's better at accounting, find somebody who's better at social media, right? So then together, everybody can say, hmm, I'll promote it this way. We'll use this manufacturer, we'll use this way to distribute it, right? So then you can create some really cool ways to get it to market. Because the idea is an idea until it becomes a product, right? So that's what the competition is doing, because if you give guys, I mean, I teach kids, at, you know, freshmen in high school, there's Edison High School has a crazy program, and when they do the presentation, you would have thought that they were seniors in college. They are getting cremated in front of their all peers because, well, how are you gonna make that for $2 when the labor is $8 an hour? And they're like, oh my God, because again, they use all the wrong assumptions, right? So you can't base your business plan if you don't really know what is going on. Don't just, oh yeah, it's a good idea that we can sell this, charge this, or you know, whatever. You gotta really know your numbers to see if it's viable or not. Understand how big or small the margins are, right? And then say, hmm, that's why all the IT guys are in, you know, India. Yes, you can get a guy here for 25,000 a year as opposed to 100 grand in America. Why wouldn't the IT guy be in India, right? Why wouldn't the call center be in India or in Philippines when it's cheaper than, you know, here? So you start thinking about all that and you're like, okay, maybe that business model doesn't work, right? And then you find all the loopholes, all the ways to make it work. There's using veterans, there's using disabled people. There's ways to stay competitive in America. If you can find out the different tax credits, different things, if truly you're competing with overseas. So you just gotta understand all the different deals, right? Labor cost, manufacturing cost, you know, delivery cost, all these different things. And more and more businesses basically rely on Amazon, you know, and that's to life because we as consumers, we don't want to pay retail. We love Black Friday, right? 70% off. Yes, what a deal, right? And then on top of it, you return it, which means that guy's going to get it for 90% off the next day, right? So think about that, right? So who's going to survive when something retails for X and you're buying for 90% off, right? I don't understand the model. Right? But we don't want to pay retail. On the other side, oh my God, I want to make $25 an hour. Minimum wage keeps going up, right? I'm like, okay, think through the math. I have gene manufacturers in Tijuana, they get paid a dollar an hour. Why would they want to pay somebody in downtown LA 20? Hudson Jeans. I mean, I can tell you all the brands, why they move overseas, what the margins are, and what's the difference, right? Because we want to get paid more, but we want to pay less. Think about it for a second. You can't do that, right? We're gonna pay more, you're gonna pay more for everything. You're gonna make more money, you're gonna pay for everything, right? So if you think about, just to give you an idea, restaurants in LA, relatively speaking, they're always 30% higher than Orange County. Just, if you never notice it, the next time you go, oh my God, why is it? Because labor in LA is more. Rents in LA are higher. So you got two things already against you, right? So when restaurants from Orange County come to LA, they're like, we can't make any money. Why? Because you're not charging enough. When the LA restaurants come to Orange County, they can't make it because nobody wants to go in because they got what? They got robbed, right? So they don't want to pay those higher prices. And they're like, what's up? Everybody in LA has no issue. And if you think LA is more expensive than Orange County, go to San Francisco. 
<laughs> right? It's all, I'll go to New York. It's all relative, right? Because I live at the beach, and it's nice to go to the local, you know, hole in the log bars to get a beer for like six bucks, right? Well, if you go to the newer bars, you pay $12 for the same beer. Why? Because they're paying higher rents, higher wages, right? So it's all the same thing. So if you go to like the little, you know, taco stand in Santa Ana, yeah, you can get a dollar taco, right? If you go to Newport Beach, it's like six bucks. And you're like, whoa, is the taco that much bigger? But no, it's the rent, the labor, and all the other things, right? So in life, it's the same thing. Why would I pay an IT guy 100000 in California when I can do it over the internet and pay the guy in India 25 right? So imagine all of these businesses, right? Because I look around and I'm like, oh my God, that is so expensive. We had to move out of Manhattan Beach, right, uh, recently over the summer. Two of us iconic restaurants have been there for over 20 years. One of them was Mama D's, they had a couple here in Newport, and us. If you ask anybody, they're like, why did you guys move out? Our landlord, 25 years ago, we're gonna charge you a couple of bucks of rent, right, Mom? Every year. By the time we got to this last summer, I'm like, we're not paying you more than we would pay somebody in New York City. This is highway robbery. And they said, we got people that wanna come in. Am I good for you? We're out. So two of us left, one after the other, right? The new guy that comes out, look, this is nothing. He was coming down from San Francisco, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm selling tacos for three dollars and fifty cents. His tacos start at ten dollars each. So of course he can pay those rents, right? Because he's San Francisco guy. He goes, oh my god, this is a bargain. So it's all relative, right? So start thinking about these things in, in life, right? Cost, supply, demand. Where do they two meet? And where? How do you get word of mouth? When people say, oh my god, that was such a great meal. That was such a great deal. That whatever it is that you're doing, whatever service product it is. It has to be in that place. So people will talk about it. As opposed to, oh my God, don't ever go there because you're gonna get robbed, right? And a great, to me, amazing sushi restaurant, Nobu, from all over the world. But the one in Newport Beach, they spend $5 million building. We're counting the days before they're out. Because not a single person I know that's gone there feels like, oh my God, $300 for sushi, I'm full, and I can't wait to go back. They're like, hey honey, can we go next door and grab a sandwich? I'm starving, after $300. And I'm like, how are they ever gonna get anybody to repeat? I've been there twice, I'm like, I don't wanna go back. And I love the sushi, I know the chef. But I'm like, $300 a person by the time we're done, and I'm starving. I'm like, who wants to do that? If you guys want to, I'll tell you where it is. It's down at the peninsula. <laughs> <laughs> and especially when there's three other sushi places around. Yeah, for maybe 50 bucks, you're like, oh my God, I'm stuffed, right? You get two bites, three bites, and I'm like, oh my God, where's my food, right? But they're all over the world, but it's relative. A Nobu in New York, 300 bucks, that's chump change, right? Los Angeles, chump change, you know, uh, Malibu, nothing. That's my, you know, my tip money for the, the night, right? And I'm saying that like 300 bucks is not a chump change, right? I work hard for my money. I gotta sell 100 tacos to make 300 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so think about those things in life and your product, what it is that you do, right? And at the end of the day, like literally, you know, I'm here, I laugh, because I'm like, dude, as my brother and I sat out, dude, we just wanna have a little place to hang out, right? The only smart one in the family is actually his dad, who's a doctor, right? <laughs> he actually went to school, got a degree, and he's, he's a full-blood you know, doctor, really smart, right? And we love him to death, but he laughs and goes, dude, you guys made a career out of making tacos, but we figured out partnerships that we have. So all the surf brands back in the day, <clears throat> I said, hey, instead of waiting for them to come in the doors, I literally went out, I'm like, dude, we got 30 people that came in today. 30 times this, we're not gonna make money. We're not gonna be able to make payroll at the end of the month. I needed to literally break even at $500 a month, which is 15,000 a month, right? So $500 a day, I could make money. Break even. So I was like $200, I'm like, this, that, I gotta get there, right? So I went across the street, offered my services to the surf brands. I said, by the way, the next time you have a surf contest, maybe let me come on and do this. And the first thing they said, by the way, we have zero budget for food. I mean, what are you talking about? Like, we have to do a contest jersey, we have to do, you know, pay the judges, we gotta put scaffolding. There's nothing left for food. 
I'm like, really? I'm like, okay, so how about, you know, you make clothes, right? You know, yeah. How about we trade? Deal bargain. They're like, do you want t-shirts and shorts? And I go, well, this is how I go to work every day. They're like, take it. You can have $500 worth of t-shirts and shorts, 